35 mm being the smallest is the worst film format you can shoot in terms of sheer image quality. When I first started shooting on a good digital camera, a 6 megapixel Nikon D70, I was shocked to find out that in terms of resolution, already it looked almost better than my carefully scanned Velvia slides. But 35mm is the format you most likely picture when you talk about film. Especially if you are just starting out with film photography, it might look like the most affordable option, both in terms of cameras and film itself. So let's jump right in and look at 5 reasons why you should shoot 35mm film. Sure enough, 35mm film cameras tend to be cheaper, smaller and lighter than their medium format counterparts. So they're often preferred for photojournalism, street and travel photography. When I was covering protests and events, even a relatively bulky Nikon F4S was still way faster and less cumbersome to operate than the smallest medium format option. For the same reason, 35mm cameras are an excellent choice to document your daily life. By the way, stay tuned until the end of the video for the reasons why you might want instead avoid shooting 35mm film. Basically, every time you need something that's not intrusive and that can be the proverbial extension of your eye, some form of 35mm camera is your best bet. Some 35mm camera can be downright tiny, but even a relatively large SLR or rangefinder will still be an easy carry, even if probably not pocketable. 35mm is also the film format with the most choices in terms of cameras, lenses and actual film types. Since the very first Leica, when Oscar Barnack decided to adapt to still photography a motion picture film format, but doubling its picture size, 35mm cameras have been declined in every possible variation. Do you want a twin lens reflex? Done! Do you prefer a massive SLR? Done! Would you like a tiny rangefinder smaller than a pack of cigarettes? Done! 35mm cameras and film are relatively cheap to shoot. You really don't need to spend a lot of cash to start shooting 35mm film, as long as you avoid falling for the fashionable camera of the month. I bought my Canon ES100 because I needed the battery it came with for another camera that in the meantime broke, and I paid for it something like $15 or so, included shipping. Pretty much every SLR or even a cheap rangefinder made in the past 60 plus years is capable of delivering great results, assuming that it's still reasonably working within specs, i.e. it's not broken. What will change is the amount of comfort in doing so. Most recent SLRs will have multiple exposure systems, motorized advance, autofocus, etc. A manual-only camera won't have some or any of these features, but you might prefer it all the same exactly because of the level of involvement in taking a picture. Horses for courses. And the investment is cheap enough that you can actually try or even use multiple kind of cameras in, at the same time without breaking the bank. Image quality. There's just something special about the way 35mm captures light and detail. The dynamic range and depth of field are often unmatched, giving your photos a unique organic feel that digital sometimes struggles to replicate. Color negative films, not just the big Portra, but even the relatively cheap Kodak Gold and its siblings, have an especially attractive wide dynamic range, and a way of rendering light and colors that's not easily replicable, if at all, with digital. Basically, the eyelets that with digital tend to just burn out have a much longer curve. So they fade gracefully into wider and wider tones instead of abruptly clipping, and shadows tend instead to block up sooner, giving a look that is much more similar to the way our eyes actually perceive a scene. Black and white film is something that you can mimic more easily with a light from preset, but still, the real thing has a different way of rendering the grays, and the tall values with some films and developer combo can shift to our gorgeous silvery tones. Slide film has way less dynamic range than your typical digital camera, maybe a third or so, but on the other hand, it's often unmatched in the way it renders saturated, gorgeous colors without looking fake. The most important point. Keepers. This applies to film in general. You might have heard this a ton of times that films make you slow down, but it doesn't mean what you might think it does if you take this sentence at face value. It's not that shooting film makes you shoot pictures slower. You could use a Nikon F5 or even a cheap Canon EOS RT and shoot pictures much faster than you can with your average or even a hand digital camera. But film ends, meaning that after 36 exposures you will have finished your role and you will have to swap it out for another one, even without taking into consideration that the roll of film costs money, so every shot you take is actually a few cents to a dollar worth, 
The mere fact that after 36 exposures, you will have to stop and change your medium for a fresh one makes you much more aware about what you are shooting. And this results in a lot more keepers. To give an example, shooting with digital, I might have two to three keepers every hundred or so frames. But shooting on film, I often have 15 to 20 keepers every roll of 36 frames. And now a bonus point. But first, thank you for joining me today. If you are enjoying this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more photography tips, tricks and education. Lastly, there is the incomparable satisfaction of holding a physical thing, a negative or a slide, in your hands. Something tangible in our increasingly digital and dematerialized world. Especially with slides, you will be amazed how special it is to look at them on a light box or projected on a wall. It is truly an immersive experience. And if you master the courage and have the space to print your own black and white, you will discover the excitement of looking at an image emerge from a seemingly white piece of paper. I swear, it's the closest thing we've got to true magic. With all these pros, why would you not want to shoot 35mm film? First of all, grain and resolution. Grain, the imperfections, they all contribute to a more emotive and artistic final product, if you like the look. But especially if you're accustomed to the clinical perfection of digital, or if your subject needs a ton of resolution, for example if you shoot landscapes, you might be better served by a larger film format, like 120. Sensitivity. Unless you really like grain, shooting in low light is often better than with digital, the exception being black and white film, that has a really unique look at 1600 ISOs and above, really contrasty and with loads of grain, if you like the style. Then cost. Shooting film can quickly become an expensive habit, especially when you factor in the price of film, developing and scanning. It's not the most budget-friendly option, especially for beginners or those on a tight budget. But if you decide to go this route, you might as well be shooting something that differs the most in terms both of gear and of results from your normal digital camera, and go straight to medium or even large format. So there you have it, the pros and cons of shooting with 35mm film. Whether if drawn to its timeless quality and artistic charm, or prefer the convenience and versatility of digital, there's no denying the unique experience that 35mm film photography offers. Until next time, keep capturing those moments, whether it's on film or digital. Happy shooting! And now, if you want to learn why the way you have been taught to load your 35mm camera is most likely wrong, check this video here.